All right, we got ourselves another Nittany Game Week Zoom with Jay, Tom, and a couple of special guests, Michael Malady, Michael Zordich from the 2012 team. Got a new documentary movie that's being released, Saving the Roar. It's out there. We're going to talk about that. And, you know, guys, I think let's start with the 2012 team in general. It's been almost 10 years, and when you go to a game now at Beaver Stadium, people see your team recognized along the other championship squads. But if they research the record, it's only eight and four. So for a lot of the younger people that aren't familiar with your team, you're getting an opportunity to tell your unique story. So let's start with that for you personally, and we'll start with Michael Maudie and then Michael Zordich. Tell us what that 2012 team means to you and some of those really difficult decisions that you guys had to make as, as young people. Yeah, well, I think – Nobody really expected what we were getting into. Uh, we were just, at the time, you know, I thought thought a lot of that that turmoil had 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 been put behind us. You know, when it when it came down to uh, 2011, whenever when Coach Paterno was fired mid year, and we were kind of, you know, into in this uh, this tornado of <laughs> chaos, and, and that would ensue. But um, you know, once that was behind us, I think we were we all we wanted to do was play football and, and have. We felt like we had a pretty good team. Uh, you know, with a lot of seniors that are coming back, you know, 30 plus seniors. And, and then, um, you know, we, little did we know, you know what we were about to get into, you know, in the summer, end of summer 2012. So, um, you know, this, this film, what, I, what I'm really proud of and, and what, uh, what I really, I was, our, our attention behind it was to at least show the, the uh, just a really great team story with a lot of teams that, um, uh, that, that, that really translate and reflect what made this place so great and what does make it so great along, you know, multi generations. And, and then I'll start with Coach Paterno, you know, and, and our, our fathers. And, and um, you know, this was basically, um, you know, one hell of an unprecedented sports story that could translate not just Penn State, but, but universal themes, you know, across every fan base and, and every boardroom in, in America and across the world. Michael Zordich, I'll, I'll throw you one, throw one to you. Um, so th this past Friday was the premiere in State College uh, of Saving the War, and it really did a great job in chronicling the season. First, congrats on getting it done. Really well done. Um, I, I won't say I was crying, but there was a lot of dust in my office as I was watching <laughs> this film last night. Um, but two things. I think um, that I thought were really, really – number of things really good, but, you know, Silas Red was vilified by a lot of Penn State fans for leaving. And I thought, you know, you guys showing his story was really very moving to hear what he had to say. So how much did it mean to you guys uh, to show all the aspect, all aspects of your, that time of your life and really see that recorded for, hit, for history? Well, I mean, that meant everything because, you know, tying into both of those – questions um you know a lot of people think that they know this story it's a very like widely publicized story everybody thinks that they have an idea of what was going on but you watch this thing and i think that as soon as you get into it you realize that that you really don't know the story at all because to be able to tell it from our eyes and to get our perspective out there which is as true as it could be i mean it means everything and it, you know a lot of people are quick to judge a lot of people are quick to say certain things and you know the silas thing for example it's a great way of, of showing, you know, you think you have an idea of what's going on in somebody's head or in, or just even in the world even, and you, you just don't until, until that person can speak. So I think it meant the world to us to be able to get our story out there, the 2012 team story out there, and just kind of just get a little bit of the truth out there, period. And it's just, you know, it's uh, we're, we're real proud of it, and we're really excited to see how, the, how people respond to it. Hey, Michael, scrap here. You, you, better, you, you better clarify which one. one scrap. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with hey, it was, Mike Moss. It was, Mike. It was confusing. <laughs> Let's go with it, too. Michael. Okay. You remember, we had yeah, Mike Gansich in that crew, too. Yeah. 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 yeah all three. Hey, uh, Michael Marty, then I'll say, you know, Mike, I'm feeling old here today because I played with your father, okay? Your dad was a hell of a football player, too. I don't want to give him his due because if he watches the show and make sure he knows I said how great he was, okay? Because <laughs> you know he's going to watch. But anyway, hey, you know, you, you come into Penn State, you had a lot of future NFL linebackers. You had Sean Lee, Navarro Bowman, Mike Cole, Nate Stupar. You know, how did the example of those guys like Sean Lee and the competition uh, 
from those other guys impact you during your career? That's why I wanted to go to Penn State was a big reason for that. That's why it was was to go and compete in that room with some of the best linebackers that uh, that were around. And I wanted to be like one of those guys. And Paul Kozlesny and you know, Tim Shaw and Dan Connor, those guys, like they really set the, the mold. Uh, and and to be able to compete with in the same room as guys, you know, where walk-ons were 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 playing in the NFL, you know, like you know, like the Josh Holes of the world, and um, there was just so much talent in that in that room, and really on that on that side of the ball, and the, really just in the locker room in general, everybody wanted to compete, and that environment was was uh, you know cultivated. So yeah, that was that set the tone, you know, from the from the get go before I even walked in. All right, this one's for Z. I'm just going to forget the Michaels and go right to – and just you know, that way we know where we're going. <laughs> Look, at uh, Hawk Slater, former Penn State player, Navy SEAL, spoke to you guys, spoke to your group, talked about his Penn State belt, all those types of things. Talk about the emotion that he brought, what that moment meant to all you guys, and, you know, how that helped with the Penn State connection as well. You are now, either by coincidence or destiny, the few – on a mission to accomplish what no others have ever been asked to accomplish. Regaining the honor and tradition of Penn State. Just what an intense human being, period. Like, uh, he, he's, got your, you, he's got your attention as soon as he walks in, but um, what you might not realize is like, he's got a big heart too, you know, and, and this, really, this really mattered to him. So when he walked into that room and he gave that, he gave that speech. I mean, that speech set the tone for the whole season for us. It was, it was just not only well written by him and, and just well said. It just there were so many themes that resonated in, in in all of his words that we just you know, we had chills on our hair standing up on the back of our necks. We had chills going during the thing. I mean, it was so intense, but it was so heartfelt, and it was just so it all everything felt like so home, because that's this that place meant that much to him. And as it did to us, so it was, it was just one of those things that assured the fact that this this Penn State uh, football like lifestyle does still go on. It doesn't end as soon as you graduate. It definitely continues, and the guys keep coming back. And it was guys like him that made that very clear. But but that speech that he gave us was um, it was beyond something special. It was intense. Uh, you guys have probably seen the movie Lone Survivor about Marcus Luttrell in Afghanistan. I happened to run into him one time, and I just said, hey, I know there's a bunch of Navy SEALs. Is there any chance you know a guy named Rick Slater? And Marcus Luttrell looked at me and said, I'm scared of Rick Slater. <laughs> I mean, that's how intense he is. And I was like, oh, my God. I didn't realize, you know, I guess he goes, first of all, he looks at me and goes, you know Rick Slater? Like, what, like what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. That's why he goes to Penn State. He goes, oh, that's right. He talked about that all the time. So he was actually afraid of him. But uh, I'm going to throw one to Monty now. I think, and, and Z, if you want to chime at the end of this one, go ahead too. But, you know, one of the things that really comes through so clear in this film are the relationships uh, that represent football at its very best. Um, there's real emotion there uh, between you guys, obviously, and other guys in the team. Um, you know, I saw that a couple of years ago at Adam Grass's funeral, you know, your teammate, when you, I saw so many guys there. Um, so talk about the bonds that were formed, that kind of enduring friendships that are built at Penn State and really built through the sport that so many of us love. Yeah, that's, you know, like uh, you play football, you go to a lot of different programs. I've, we played at every level, both of us, uh, Mike, as well. And I think that there's something a little bit different about the relationships that that, you've, that you form or um, – when you're at Penn State, I mean, that, that there's just it's just something a little bit different, and it's not something I can put my finger on, but it's just something that that I, you know, I've seen, you know, with my dad and you know, through decades ago, and I've seen it in every decade, in every generation from players that played it every year. I think part of that probably has to do with the, that, you know, a lot of the same experience, given the fact that you have a coach that has that has that culture for so long, uh, but also it's just what you go through together on, on the field, off the field, uh, what, what makes our year so unique and why I think we're so t – t I know we're so tight as a group in 2012 is because, like, we had been through something no one had been through. And, and that was, like, multiple years of 
like this is all we got you know it was like media flying everywhere uh trying to you know bait us into saying crap for two three years and um you know that just made us really really uh bond together because that's all we knew we could trust in, in those in, in situations but you do that through blood sweat and tears and experience and uh you know common experience together where you, where you really cultivate this culture of uh of, of brotherhood that's especially you don't get that anywhere else or very few other places so yeah i think that um you know football in general builds those relationships naturally right you get that bond it's just a special sport and so you, you get that team aspect and you got to sacrifice a lot for a certain guy here and there so the game in itself has that built into it but then you get to a program like penn state who, who kind of feeds off who, – who, like, I think that the foundation of that whole program is based on that concept, you know, that, that you stick together, you have your friends, and that's, that's just how the place has been built. And, um, I mean, you look at – I look back and I, look, I think about my dad and Shane Conlon, who they played together. They're still, they're still attached to the hip. You know, like with, with us is that that bond that we had in that, in that locker room, um, ours was actually tested, and, and like, we were able to yeah. – we were able to use that yeah. to like stand up and really show how strong it was, and, and, and it ended up it ended up working out for the best. Um, Z, this question's for you. Although you're not the Z, the real Z is your dad. You're Michael Z to me. Okay. Okay, that's so you, 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 is that a deal? You you know you bring up a lot of good guys. You brought up Shane Conley. You brought up your father, having recruited both those guys. I know a little about it. I spent a lot of time at Youngstown Cheney, as you know. I've been on Hazelwood Avenue. A maximum number of times, obviously. To I was just for a little dinner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know my and daughter quite well. They got tired of seeing me at the house all the time back when the rules were a little bit different. But uh, one of the things about Penn State, you guys have touched on it. There's such a great sense of family at Penn State. In fact, you guys are two, and I don't know if you know, there's two of 26 father-son combinations that have that have played up at Penn State. And how much did this affect your decision? Um, to, to come to Penn State because of your father playing at Penn State? Both of you guys can answer this question. Well, I think immediately it, I wanted to say it didn't have an effect because you know, I wanted you know, you know, my parents weren't very pushy. They wanted me to go do my own thing or they wanted me to go where I wanted to play. And so I was like, I was, you know, thinking about other places and taking visits there. But um, Yeah, you were kind of a pain in the ass about that, by the way. <laughs> I was like, I know you're coming. Let's get it done with. <laughs> yeah, well, I did. I get up. I get up to Penn State for a visit, and I have my grandma, my grandpa, my great grandma. <laughs> I got none. You know, I got my mom and dad, and uh, I'm walking into the room, and Joe doesn't even say hi to me. He goes right to my great grandma, my grandma, and my grandpa, and he's talking. They're throwing names around. Like he knows. He still has their names down. Plus, he's asking family members, cousins, this and that. And knows all these names. And I'm just sitting there thinking, like, what, what the hell am I even doing? Like, yeah, I'm coming here, of course. <laughs> so so as, soon as, as soon as that happened, it made sense. So I would say it played 100% a role in me getting there. It just, it just took me seeing it in person to realize that. Mm -hmm. And, Marty, how about you? Because you, you, you tried to play a little coyer than Mike Z did. <laughs> yeah, no, I did. And, I, well, because I wasn't. I saved this visit for last because I wanted to just make sure that I had seen other places and and I and it was my brother was up there he was a walk on so I didn't want to come up there and like steal his thunder you know like I just I guess I didn't realize it the same thing until I got up there and I felt it and you know like met John Lee and it was like met Puzz and those guys but really it was the the moment where where uh, I was up there I was in a boot like. My, coming in between my, I guess, the junior and senior year in the summer. And Mike was on the field uh, running around uh, during the junior camp. And, like, he – and we knew, like, each other because we were all, you know, in the articles, you know, Mike and Mike and Mike, right? And uh, he, he runs across the field. He's like, what, what's going on, man? Like, you coming here? And I'm like, I don't know, man. It's like, I'm waiting to see. And he was like, what are you waiting on, bro? <laughs> He's like, what are you waiting on? <laughs> and I'm like, so I – um, I'm like, I don't know. We'll see. So I, like, I turned him walking up to Joe's office with my dad. And, like, the whole time I'm thinking, like, I don't, what the hell am I waiting for, man? I, I get to play with guys like that. The guys like this. Like, we just had – it just seemed like this – it was all built in. You know, and that, that 
to me it was you know made it made it different you know until, until we got upstairs to joe's office and and i'm sitting around waiting for like 20 minutes go by and we hadn't even brought up me yet <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and it told me everything but me That's and i'm like you know what uh that that to me you know whereas you go to every all these other places and, and all they're doing is just hyping you up hype 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 you know like you're starting this and that you're just good and then i'm like okay you come here you work hard you got a great opportunity uh you know to have everything you, you could ever want it's up to you really and the guys around you that's that, that to me was compelling i resonated with that so um yeah it was pretty easy I got a thing here, Michael Z. We better do this if we're going to get in trouble because if we don't mention your mother, Cindy was a cheerleader at Penn State. You know we're going to hear about it. So, <laughs> I think, you. you know, because you know, so you could say, did did Scrap say anything about me on the show? <laughs> so being good friends with them over all these years, you know, I, I, you know, I, I think your your mother might have had a little bit of a factor in helping you, us get you to Penn State. There's no doubt. You know, she she's she's sly in her way. She definitely. Definitely got got me up there. I would say more than more than to the other schools, but just um, all again, all, all I really had to see was the fact that they were there. To, that's where they met. You know, that's where I grew. They, we, they used to take us to games growing up. We used to do the once a year tailgate with the Conlins, and it was. I mean, she she definitely played her role, and she knew she did. She, she, she no doubt. Out. She just wanted. She just wanted me to make me think it was my idea, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey uh, this one's for Z. I, I know some of the film was shot in Youngstown, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, let me let me just uh, talk about Youngstown for a second. You know, your dad's uncle Don Butchie uh, was one of the great coaches and certainly one of the great smokers of all time. <laughs> I mean, you didn't go to his office without about three feet of smoke hanging from the ceiling and your clothes smell like smoke. But one of the great coaches of all time. Um, your dad played in the NFL for so many years. Uh, you played at Cardinal Mooney where there was at least a half dozen guys that went to schools like Notre Dame and Penn State, Ohio State, uh, Nebraska. We talked about some of them. Um, and your school produced guys like Bob Stoops and all the Stoops brothers and Bo Pelini. Um, and your bocce tournament, greatest high school football fundraiser I've ever been involved in so yeah you know 2009 we line up in a game with Daryl Clark at quarterback Youngstown Michael Zordich at fullback Youngstown and Brandon Beecham at Youngstown tailback so what is it about Youngstown I mean I recruited there for 17 18 years but tell me there is something in that water in the in that valley in the Steel Valley the old Steel Valley Conference uh, I don't know. It's, we, we laugh about it all the time, but it, it is certainly something in that water. It's not only just the, it's, it's the culture. I mean, growing up, you know, f people aren't overbearing about football, but there's a certain style of football that they expect to be played. And there's a certain style of person that they expect to play it. You know what I mean? And in Youngstown, there's just so much talent around here. And I'm sure there's talent everywhere. But they, this place has a certain way of getting that talent to realize what's important about the game, I would say. And so, the, like the 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 mentality of of football is kind of like ingrained in your in your brain. It's just there's a, there's a, there's a way you're going to play this game. There's a there's a certain type of person you're going to be. And then once you got guys that do it, you know, and 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 are that are that type of person, and you're a younger guy coming up, and you see them doing it that way, and that's how it's done, then you just you, you follow suit, right? And then it just creates this this cascade of just you know, Youngstown football that. Obviously, I mean it's it's far reaching. It's been it's all over the Big Ten, especially, and it's just um it's just a really fun place to be to be around. I got to tell you about Uncle Donnie um, over at Mooney. We went we went and we moved his uh, we had to help him move some stuff because he he was switch, switching offices. So we were picking up some of the uh, pictures that were on his wall. You know how he had all those yeah. all those all those pictures on the wall, and when we picked them up. There was uh, plain white squares behind each picture, and the walls were still a little bit yellow. You could see where every single picture <laughs> was because all the smoke over the years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even after they said no smoking in the building, he was like, ah, my office isn't part of the building. <laughs> like, good for you. Was, hey, I know John's got one last one for you, but, you know, I just, just want to say to both you guys, you know, the way you guys carried yourselves in 2012, uh, I know one guy that would be awfully, certainly would have been awfully proud of the way you guys kind of carried things on and, and really the foundation you laid for the rest of 
rest of the time at Penn State. And I just want to say that to you both. And I want people to hear that because I think that's important. Wow. Well, I, I mean, that means the world to us. And I mean, the foundation we laid there was because of the foundation he laid right before us. You know, I mean, that was that's 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 100 percent true. And uh, we're just happy to see, you know, his legacy go on, even, if, you know, through us. Even It's just yep. a powerful place. Jay, that means a lot, man. That it really does. I, I want to say that. I mean, you guys, um, it's immeasurable what what you that what your that name has done for this place, and you know, for for us to be able to part be a part of that moving forward into the next generation. That's what it's about. So, period. That's appreciate it. Tell us how you can find out about the movie, how you can see it, uh, where it's being released, and. Um, you know, so that we can get it pushed out there. Everybody can can take a look for themselves. Um, this this film, you could watch it on. It's on a uh, a streaming like pay per view platform where you could buy it. It's uh, it's on IN dot live, and uh, film's called Saving the Roar. You can go to SavingTheRoar dot com. That's where they have show times. I think there's like five or six show times a day, Mike, um, and that's where you could see it. So. We're excited to get it out there, at least just for people to hear the story that they've it's really never been told. We haven't sat down and told it before. The guys that were all there, um, you know, John, John U. Bacon, he's a, was the only writer that really we allowed in the building um, who wrote and narrated um, a lot of this. And <clears throat> so we're proud of it. It certainly does give, give the story justice. It's hard to believe some, some of that, but it, you really didn't have to embellish any of it, which is even more incredible uh, about the guys that were there and, and uh, doing what we did. Just proud of it. Yeah, I just want to add in how proud I am of you guys also. And I, I didn't forget what you did at the end of 2011 either with all the stuff that was going on and the way you guys handled yourself on and off the field through those last four games. I know it was a difficult time for you then. And then you guys carried it on through 2012. And uh, really uh, – you guys did an, an inimitable job on a very, very tough situation. Thank you, Scrap. I mean, appreciate that, Scrap. It's a lot, it's a lot easier when, uh, when you're surrounded by people that it matters to. So, you know, it was, um, it just means a lot. I mean, being at that game last week, um, just after the game, seeing the alma mater being sung, and, and not, not one person had left the stadium yet. And, you know, just the thought of looking around and saying, "This is this isn't this is still here. It's not just still here, but it is 100% alive." It, that just that's that's everything right there. That's mission accomplished. That's just so happy that that, that program is still still thriving. And the, and the Guido DeLeo Whiteout lives on. How about it? <laughs> How about it? <laughs> I know he was talking it about the whole recruiting process. He was the secret weapon we had. Good old he was. Guido. He was. You know, guys, thanks so much. And, you know, and I'll just say before Todd kind of wraps this up, yeah. you know, if you really – anybody out there that really wants to see what football can be, um, what it can mean to young people, and also the way it can inspire so many people to do things that they never thought they could do or even beyond what they thought they were capable of, this, this is – you got to see this movie. It is – it's really, really uh, speaks volumes about – and it's not just Penn State. It's about what football can mean for anybody. Hell yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Appreciate, Appreciate it, Jeff. Well, guys, it's appropriately named mm -hmm. Saving the Roar. You mentioned the whiteout. You mentioned seeing the thing. Look, they, they've, they've gotten it to a successful place. They're doing a great job there. Trace, Saquon, they've all given the 2012 team credit for saving the roar and keeping things going. And, uh, look, we appreciate your time. Always come back. Any messages you want to deliver, just, just hit us up, okay? We really appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you. Thank really. you, Todd. Thank you, guys. Thanks, 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 Thanks